Connor and Connor's going to give us a, a brief overview of the most common things he displays to customers whenever demoing the MyCubo portal. So Connor, if you want to take it away there. Yeah, okay. So first thing is you always use Chrome. So it's optimized for Chrome. We'll work on other browsers, but for demo purposes, and always handy to make sure that control zero, you're at 100% um, scale so that uh, all the windows fit. So I'm just going to sign in and go to a customer that I'm comfortable with, I've spoken to, and they're happy for me to share their information, which is Freshlink. And I'm going to select a vehicle here to show Track Smart, Fuel Smart, Taco Smart, and Live Camera Solution. So I have pre picked a vehicle online in the last five minutes before my call. And I'm just going to go straight into the main thing why we are who we are and where we started, which was tracking, plotting, dotting the map. Um, as often as the customer needs it and to be as reliable as possible because the core tracking value is from where is my load. So if I go to this vehicle here, I can plot it in the map. We're a Google map license pair, so I'll always show that we've got the likes of Street View um, where you can scroll in, close that. We've got things like uh, Traffic Layer, so we can show what the live traffic is. We can show business layer. So you wanna see if they're doing drops, who's closest around them for a commercial value. If they wanna see a big boost in their opportunities in that area. You've also got satellite, different zoom levels. You can just click to zoom. Or you've got hybrid, so that's overlaying all of that information as well as the satellite imagery. For this purpose, for the online demo, I'm just going to use Roadmap because it uses less um, bandwidth and we've already got the cameras going on the site. So just to keep, I would always, whenever you're demoing this, always keep it on um, Road View. Yeah. I can also, I've got Google search here, so I would normally search the customer. So if I was GPS riffing over the road, if I was demoing to them, I would show that. And again, all that sort of stuff, the hybrid. So I've, I've used Google search on our platform. And I would even jump to creating a poly be, polygon point of interest. So select their yard and actually draw out. Is this your building here? Yes, it is. Do your vehicles park here, 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 and here? Create that polygon, put it into a group, or just call it um, GBS Riffin. And that will now display on the vehicle list, on any reports or any searches, instead of that location, those Latin longs, anything that falls within that polygon POI will be identified as whatever I've typed into that free type there. Okay. So this whole point is showing live tracking. So I can, this is, I identify the different areas of the site now. So on the left hand side, we call this the vehicle list. We've got the blue band, the widget bar at the top. We've got the black bar here, which is the mapping bar. And then we've got the map itself. So I'm going to focus on the um, vehicle list itself. So remember, this is a track smart, fuel smart, and taco smart. So just to break that down, the track smart's the tracker. So this is updating every 30 degree turn, every 500 minutes, and every 60 seconds. That means we're sending as much data as you ever need as frequently as possible. So on a motorway, we don't want to see, you know, hundreds of little dots. We just need to see if they take a turn off at the services or at a junction. Um, but then in this, at the same time, we want to see if it's if a vehicle is leaving um, we can nearly tell which bay it's leaving from. So I've yeah. got a couple of different views depending on the way that the customer wants to see it. So if I go again, my satellite view and I can dial straight in here. And I can tell which bay actually that is. You know, you've seen this is the ignition on, so it's updating every 60 seconds when it comes on. And then as we go down, it starts to move. We can follow it through the site. 
how it's joined the motorway or it's how it's joined the A road, how it's continued on until it gets to the motorway and how it's how that's happened. As I say, we've got Street View and depends on which way this is going. Normally to why the customer and get them, I would jump straight in and say, right, that's satellite view, that's great. But if you've got our live DVR product, I can also, if I just click the same part of the road, I can dial in and hit play. Even though this vehicle's traveling 56 mile an hour down the M25, I just dialed in to see what was happening at 14.09 today. And again, I can look and see what was going on in the near side. I can play back. So the difference between us and other our competitors is you don't need to download all these chunks of data and then, oh, I've missed it or I haven't missed it or different channels. You actually physically see it. And if that's what you want, you then simply download it. Download all channels, download individual channels, and I'll download that in standard definition or in high definition. So at this point, I've just chosen standard definition. So we record them both. Very important for the customer to know that because we can dial in and get a VGA copy here, which means that there's no buffering, you'll notice, as this is going on. I should get a pop-up on the bottom right-hand side here. Uh, a bit delayed because we're on the, the video call, but I should get a, a pop-up here in green to tell me it's worked. Or we are at the um, the mercy of the mobile network, so if it hasn't been successful in, in uh, connecting to the device, I'll get a red pop-up to say that I need to try again. And again, at this point, it's just a matter of talking over the, you know, the the time. Uh, I normally fill that in about what what are you using at the minute, what sort of connectivity have you got? Do you pay for your SIM cards? Is it something else? Um, you know, is it uh, does your does your supplier provide the SIM cards or or is it is it is an all in one piece? Yeah. And just while I love those, Connor, you're talking about obviously the mapping and the plotting and the routing and stuff like that. Is that something that you would be typically with that? Why the customers such? Was that something maybe the competitors are doing, or would that be one of the again the unique selling points? That that's the unique selling them? points. Not a lot of the systems do that. Now that's just failed as well. So I'm now going to download this. I'm going to change something in HD. I believe I have the option there of SD and HD, and I don't believe the four channel has that option. I don't think it's. Yep. You can, I think you have to be HD. So um, this will be the no. It's already exists. So at the minute, I'm stuck in a bit of a quadri here, and it's you know it it's not great for a demo. So what I would do is just say blame it on the user and say sorry, I've made a bit of a a boob there. What I'll do is again another way of of doing this, um, is I would revert to look for a harsh break, which I've just managed to find there. So I would just search harsh break. Here's one where it's decelerated, and you explain we 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 measure the the speed in which they decelerate via the tracking unit. So this is decelerated in four, four miles an hour in a second. So gone from 29 mile an hour to one mile an hour within a minute, um, but it's happened within a second. So basically the deceleration of four miles per hour in a second. So again, rather than having to look through lots of footage that I have to download, get the third party information where it happened, I've identified it on the map. I'm now down into the DVR. And we're going to watch that. So it's just happened. So if I go 10 seconds back to the event that just happened, that's literally the inertia and um, the, the accelerometer. So we're doing 29 mile an hour here. So I'm a driver trainer. I'm deciding whether this is worthy of talking to the driver or they've, drove, they've driven into the back of that car. I don't know yet. So we're just watching it here. And you'll see. Yeah, they've had to jump on the brakes a bit there. Now, it's not a severe brake. A severe brake we can have automatically upload, but at this point, um, that's a that's that's what we call a harsh brake. So again, if we run through it, if I want to download this, I choose the channels, and I'm going to just run it in HD. Submit that. Again, now this should just pop up in the bottom right now if I've got connectivity and now it's happened. So um, this is real life. You know, you joke about it with the customer that's now downloading. So we've connected to the box. We've identified an incident and we're now downloading. So I'll yeah. back out of that because as you know, a download takes a bit of time. So I'll say I got carried away there. I want to go back to what the, the, the basic tracking function is. 
So just to, we're updating every um, every 30 degree turn, every 500 meters and every 60 seconds. So anytime you look at a snail trail on the map, if I look at the current journey, you shouldn't be wanting for any information. You know, if I just follow this, you can see every turn, every contact, every ping, and it's all related over here to harsh break and harsh corner. And we, we, it's called, this is, as I say, this is our, our snail trail. Some people call it yep. breadcrumbs. So that's, that, that has to be right. That has to be, you're only as good as your last update and we're updating more than, than the competition. Um, there are systems that update every 15 seconds, but again, pointless if you're in a straight line. And if you're a lot of 30 degree turns, you might not necessarily get that. Um, so there are other reports on here, such as journey report. If I just want to see, and I've got actually, I've got a, a shortcut to that. Um, this is the journey report, GPS journey reports. So this is from the tracker and it's taken the start location, end location, the duration of miles and an island time. And again, I can plot those individual journeys on the map just to see exactly, not everybody turns the ignition off whenever they go to a stop. So if I if I had an instance here, I could just click on that and I could see it, get all the information that I need to. Um, I'll bring in fuel again. So we've we've done our, our basic tracking. That's that's pretty much it. You're only as good as your last message. Uh, you can you can see how long vehicles have been on site. You have a time on site report, but that's a given that, that we do that. What makes us different is the fuel, and the fuel and our. Um, and our unobtrusive connection to the CAN bus. At this point, I'll maybe introduce Nexus, our app. So what I, I would actually go in and probably pick an Essex bulk, somebody like that, because they use our app, number one. Number two, they let us use the information, and I'm just going to show, them, and they're good in engineers, they're good at installs. So if I go to completed date, search for one that is a Cubo complete approved. So there's an install. And if I just click on this button, I'm telling the customer that we audit and we record everything, whether it be our own engineer, subcontracted engineer, or the customer in this case, their own mechanics. Mm -hmm. Taking pictures, you know, I go through the whole, taking pictures of, of the cab before we get into it, how it looks, the hardware, there's our Cubo badge always looks good connections to the CAN or connect connections to PAR. So builder plugs in this case, your column, your score L, talk about all of that. Um, it's FM, it's not FMS data. Uh, we've got 400 odd parameters rather than the eight our competitors use. Yep. You've got CAN click, completely unobtrusive. So there's no scotch locks, no splicing of wires. That's your CAN high, CAN low. You get your remote downloading box. We got your VU part number. You've got our connections using all the proper connections. There's the three lights that our engineers know it's working. There's also a test in the app. You've got the serial number, the DVR, how we're connecting. All of our connections to the vehicle are, are covered. There's all of the lights working. There's the back of the DVR unit. And we're looking at the GPS antenna here. We're looking at all of the cameras then, where they're mounted, forward facing ca camera, one back onto the fifth wheel, the interior camera, the rear camera connected by a Susie. You've got your direct vision standards equipment, all your sensors of that kit, your external warning, and then again, more pictures. Um, and then I would also show the fact that we can actually test it now within the last yeah. 20 hours. Now today, obviously being a bank holiday, we've got all the green ticks over here. It means it was working at the time whenever Jamie tested it. I'm now testing it and it hasn't connected since, you know, it hasn't been on. So I'll go with that. Point being, I'm also using time to show once I pop back in here. Oh, by the way, yeah. that's my downloaded. So I'll continue on and I'll tell them about the granular detail because this is today. We've got the summary bar up here. This is all the CAN bus data. And then we prevent, we, we present it in such a way that makes it relevant to your operation. Where's your pain at the minute? Is it the price of fuel? Is it, you know, not being able to put, prove the drivers how they're driving? Is it sustainability? What's the hook here? So yeah. 
we've got the CAM data, journey time, driving time, miles traveled. These are all the counters at the top. Average MPG, and that's taken from the CAM. We're completely manufacturer agnostic, so there's no some some of the competitors systems. Um, normally, the manufacturers only show driving MPG, so it looks very good because there's no idling fuel. We'll just give you actual MPG. Yeah. Uh, liters per hundred kilometers, cruise control was used, stop time, and then we go down to the granular details. So that 95 minute journey, 95 mile journey, I can actually, because I've got the fuel unit, not only am I getting the start location, stop location, but we overlay all the CAN bus data and make it relevant. So you've got the true odometer, 95 miles, how long it was idling. Um, excess idle, we allow five minutes over the original two minutes for a normal idle. Um, and in many instances of that, how long it was stopped for, how much fuel you was used in idle. And at this point, we're showing MPG, but if you're in the south of Ireland or Europe, you might be kilometers per hundred liters. We can we can change that up on our user settings, and I'll always show them that, how you can change then in here. Yeah. I'll not do it here for my system, but um, how often it's updated and all that sort of information um, can all be changed per user. So I'll go in here again and You've got your trip time, driving time, whether cruise control was used for an hour and 28 minutes. So I take that that's a good thing. Yep. Um, whether PTO was engaged, the driver. You got the harsh brake, excessive idle break, uh, uh, excessive idle events. All of this we can make graphical or in a different, but this is the granular, granular data. Fuel level we're reporting every 60 seconds. You've got your ad blue if, if it's if it's um, if it's used any ad blue in the journey, brake pedal brake pedal count and vehicle axle with if it's announced in the CAN bus. Yep. So again, you can show it in the map and you can show that same same thing. You've also got a driver scorecard. So on this, this is a one pager you can print out or send as a PDF to the driver. And this just makes it relevant. The areas that we would focus on is harsh brakes, zero harsh brakes in this journey. Absolutely fantastic. Hasn't, hasn't really been over 1300 RPM, and we know that because he used the cruise control. And then the other one would be idling, only 9.8% idling. So really fantastic um, MPG there. And I take your corner when you're down one of the customer, you are going to do the granular detail, but you're looking to get some sort of oyster or some sort of glimmer to say, we yep. want driver behavior, we maybe want to concentrate our sustainability, and you're trying to angle your product solutions towards these kind of glimmers of hope then, you know? Yeah, and what I'm trying to show is this is stuff that nobody else does. See the level of data we've got with the fuel, and then you bring in, actually, we're also, we've got a remote, so that's the fuel. Um, you can show all of the not other reports, but BCAN summary report by vehicle. It, it, we've gone granular. I'll then blow that up and say, you have reports you're going to be asked for. You know your co2 whether it be by driver by vehicle how would you do that at the minute yeah normally it's just finger in the air i have no idea you know well because we're measuring actual true uh fuel and the leaders burnt we can use the same um we can use the same um logic uh, logic and calculation as the nat national um, atmospheric emissions as they do, which is what fours use, and um, to show you the same thing, and it can all be automated. We can even, and then I pull it in to say, so I'll, I'll do that. I'll just show, um, we'll select all the vehicles. So 314 vehicles at this point, if I just select them all. And I do it by vehicle. So you'll probably run this for a week. So I've just run 314 vehicles and all of that CAN bus data is in one place. That's for 314 vehicles. When you show somebody that, that's like a month's work. Yeah. So it's fine out who does that. Make sure it's relevant. Does your FD look at this? Have you a sustainability champion? Have you an ISO champion? Who is it that looks after all this data? Who has to report on it? Because yeah. the decision might be made to go to our system, not by a transport manager, but by finance or sustainability. So you've got the registration, the friendly name, the depot. I call it the big ugly report. Yeah. Uh, the first journey start, last journey end, total journey count, odometer start, odometer end, total distance travel, total brake count, total harsh brake count, 
percentage of horse breaks from all breaks, average distance by horse breaks, my favorite one, because if they can get away with 532 miles per horse break, and this one is every 22 miles, if I go to the MPG, this one's getting 10.4, this one's getting 9.3. That tells a story Just in itself. Just on that, Connor, because you touched on it, you know, you maybe go to demo to the likes of an FD or an MD. Would you try and steer it in the sense that this is going to have impact to the likes of an ISO champion or an environmental champion or even the finance director? Would you try and steer it to at least get someone to either peer who's review making, or make sure? Who's making the decision? How you make, like the two things, how are we different in the competition? This is how we're different. Right, who is this relevant to? Because we 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 know that this is relevant to the guys that actually sign the checks. Yeah, they're the ones that are accountable for all this. And yeah. then you make it easy to them. So you've got all the total PTO, total fuel burnt, total fuel used driving, average MPG, average driving MPG, average axle weight if it's announced in the can there. CO two NOx particular matter and add blue and everything to the left of these four columns is straight off the can. Everything to the right here is a calculation. As I say, we have a disclaimer in here just because it's this, it has to be right. Um, and as long as they've given us the right information, uh, it's that National Atmospheric Emissions Inventory. And obviously the ad blue tank size, they need to give us whatever the, the type of vehicle is and the amount of literage. But you don't go through that in a demo. You know, that's yeah. just the, so but that, that was run by vehicle. And then you say what's well, even handier is you can run it by driver. So if I select all drivers at this point, you're saying we we use the D8 pin. And I've just run. So there's 314 drivers. There was 500 odd or sorry, 314 vehicles. There was between four and 500 drivers. That's all of their data broken down. And when you do that, it gets really powerful because yeah. nobody does this. The do there's 366 we've just run it straight away um you can all also export this oh, don't do that then there's one for later done yeah there's a there's an excel button i think on the report or is that it so at this point yeah csvs there's for by drive by vehicle but it, maybe it's not there by driver. And again, showing them that this can also be used and pulled in via API. So you open up the API. So again, some of the language we use, it's your data as a customer. Where is it best served for you? So sometimes that data is very important for an FD. They might only look at it once every three months. They might look at it once a week. They won't look at it every single day. So if that's better off in a transport management system or in their line of business system, they can call on it by a secure token based API and they can pull that data so they can call it for a registration and say, right, between 7 a.m. one morning uh, last Monday and 2 p.m. the Tuesday, they were doing a Cubo delivery. Or, an, or you know a, a royal mail delivery royal mail want to know how much co2 and how much fuel was burnt for that delivery they can do all that in their tms system you know it takes it away from us writing all these different reports for people just make yeah. them available for them um, and then you can say you know you can go through all the api stuff which again you've only got certain times so you're you're just nodding to what we can do yeah and at this point i'll go back Unless they really want to get into that, I'll go back to that and say, but that was that was granular level. Um, ZWM was the one we were looking at earlier. So you always do the you always do this bit at the start because you now want to go into the camera reports and say, right, I've been able to work with you and do what I was doing in the same system. I've downloaded this footage. So you'll see here, you get a forward facing near side offside, even though it told me that that hadn't happened earlier, it has actually, it, it was able to make enough of a connection to download it. So 
And again, I can download this. The you explain about the one terabyte, two terabyte hard drive. You know, seven to ten days or uh, fourteen to twenty one days footage download. Depending on how many cameras you have, how many you know, we can we can discuss that at a later date. What your needs are, you can play this straight from the system. So this is what we watched earlier: the harsh break. And that's that's where they've jumped. They haven't really been watching the road, but we also had the near side and the off side. And then you've also got whenever all the footage comes in, we merge it. So you've got a 360 view here. You can have up to eight channels. At this point, you tell them we'll keep that on the system for 90 days, but quite as easily you can download it to your own system. And I'll always show at this point, 25 frames per second, 720p cameras. And I'll explain, you know, there's a lot of nonsense about the the industry, about 1080p cameras and all. That's the frame. It's about how many pixels you throw at it. Yeah. One of our main competitors for a 1080, they're quoting 1080p. For so, so for 1080p, they should have twice as many pixels as we throw at a 720. And we have three times more than they do on a smaller frame. So 25 frames per second, you'll see I can see all the registrations. It's all very clear. It's a beautiful thing. So this is what goes on. So again, that's now, I've got that forever and a day in my system, but this might be to a customer. It might've been an altercation on site. It might've been, disproven something or proven something or an insurance company. I can just click email and can you still see this email or yeah. is it? Yeah. Uh, and then I can pick where I'm going to send it. So I just send that link. Tells you that will expire 90 days from the footage period. And then you can download that in MP4 and use it wherever you need to. And as okay. you were saying there, Connor, you're obviously building up wee different bits of product propensity. You're saying this is how it links in, so you can maybe investigate insurance claims. Coupled with the fuel smart, you can get efficiency. Coupled with the cameras, you can benefit your backup for that claim. So it's all tying into it's as many products as you can throw at them at one time, basically. That's it. And then the other part of this is we haven't mentioned tackle. So we've got track, we've got fuel. I don't want to run out of time, so I'll just jump on. Uh, that's what you say to the customer, like, and I'm sending the same to you. So I wanted to do it before five. So um, we've also got a Taco Smart product here, which can download the driver card and the head every 24 hours if that's what you need. We'll send that to anybody else's uh, to your own uh, desktop software, or we'll send it to a, a Taco Graph analysis system. And um, we partner with. Pretty much everybody, but our strategic partner and who we advise to, to anybody is Aquarius or, or second to none. Um, we're also pulling it from the head so we can give you live DDS data. So this is updated a couple of minutes ago. Your current status, your daily driving, your 10 hours, 56, your 90. The customer knows if it's relevant to them, they know yeah. what this means. You don't need to go into it. Extended drives available too. We just rest. That'll update every 60 seconds. Um, but it's also downloading the information into our partner Aquarius. Now, if you do have the link as well, we can work with anybody, but we've actually a synergy. We're, we're so aligned that we've actually incorporated bits of each other's platforms into, in, in, into each system. So I can actually click on here and go straight into their platform. So with the click of a button, I'm into this vehicle, ZWM. This is for walk around tricks and I can check and see, was there a walk around check done today? There was. So if, if this had been in an incident or I needed to make something, I can go straight out of their system into ours. I can also do it via the driver as well. So if I want to have a look at this and see, um, we, we show the driver decision data, but you can go straight into the driver's information here. They're building an actual timeline, so I can see his time and attendance, which is another Aquarius uh, product. I can then go into their activity calendar. I can go everywhere from here, and if they they they'll they'll know what they're looking at here. You know, I can go into um, pretty much anything that Aquarius offer. E sign because they'll then say, "Well, 
how do you do your infringements? You know, they'll have those all, all those questions. So I can go into e sign here and look at some of the signed accepted timesheets. This is live data, so you've got to be very, very careful. Um, but we can see the driver's not taking a break of at least 15 minutes after six hours of working. They've only taken they haven't taken any minutes. So we can go to the last page and look at the crap. There's no comments. He's just accepted it. The driver's signed it and the company signed it. And that's now auditable for everybody to see. Yeah. But I've just gone from our system into theirs. And when people see that, it's again, yeah. only, only if they're in compliance, <laughs> you need yeah. the compliance people there to not, you know, to, to do that as well. Um, and again, at this point, I've pretty much covered tra track smart, fuel smart, tackle smart. You don't need to visit the vehicle. It automatically downloads. It schedules. It goes straight into the system. You're just using the data rather than working on it or, or, or looking for it. Um, fuel level was some that I haven't touched on. Uh, I didn't actually touch on that. Would be something that that could be important if I go into a fuel level graph. So I'm going to see how many times this unit has. Fill this month. These are all the times that it's filled up, and then I can go into I can shorten the map. And again, show my satellite, show where it was, and then we can look here and we can actually show the fuel level graph. Yeah. So it's gone from seventy one percent up to ninety nine percent. Just pick another random one. There you go. So sitting 75%, engine off on 1645, 74%, engine on again, 99%. So we know that it's been filled. Yeah. And I take it all this kind of the kind of sustainability, fuel, increase in cost. It's going to be a big thing that you're trying to get in the foot of the door to say money savings for yourself and a big partnership at the end of it, you know. Big, big point is our website, um, which is not that one, wearecubo.com. So I'll always bring them to this and leave them with this on there. If I can use their computer, all the better. People yeah. like to get their own website out or laptop. I like to do it on their own. Yeah. You can go into the case studies. All our products are there. We're always adding to this. So don't listen to hear it from me. Here's real case studies about how people on the, the Essex bulk one at the minute is fantastic. You know, the size of the fleet, what they're saying about us, um, and if you just could need to give them anything. Improvement, driver satisfaction up 78%, sustainability reduction 30%, safety reduction in insurance claims 29%, and efficiency, reduced fuel bill 25%. I'm sure there are no small monetary figures off the back of it, you know. Oh, why? Well, that's they'll work it. They'll they'll work it out in relation to their own. So, but that's normally how long you've got. So, mm -hmm. it it it's kind of what I'll do is I will record a couple. So we'll stop this one, but I'll record a few, Dan, um, with a customer and see yeah. the flow, and then you'll be able to pull it out. I think that was good. I stopped the recording there, Connor. I think that's good.